before gaming on the iPhone 12. So we finally have both devices here and I'm one of those who has them in graphite and black, 12 Pro and 12, so you guys can be happy, you can see the colors you want. And uh, yes, these devices are here. We wanna see how well it performs, the A14 Bionic, and also the display, brand new display we have here on the device. Now, starting off, both devices have similar size displays, 6.1 inches, uh, which is for both the 12 and 12 Pro, but they are not 120 hertz display. Sadly, we do not have that on the iPhone uh, 12 line yet. So we'll see, hopefully that comes next year. But in terms of performance, we're looking at the A14 Bionic chipset, which should give us a lot of great performance on the device. And we'll look at benchmarks later, so uh, let's wait till then. We do have, of course, stereo speakers on the device. And if you guys wanna take a good deep dive into the speakers for the iPhone 12 and 12 Pro, definitely check out our link uh, up there, top you know, right-hand corner of your screen, where we do our speaker test, and you can see how well the speakers perform. But you hear it during the gameplay session. So I'm not gonna waste your time. We're gonna go jump right in into some gaming and then we'll talk about the kind of performance we talk about heat we'll be taking a look at a few games call of duty mobile pubg mobile genshin impact samurai jack and blade of god those last two games are on apple arcade so you can check it out uh, through apple arcade if you want to play them so let's go ahead and start doing some gaming guys Yeah! 
All right, so gaming performance overall was pretty good. I had some really good performance with PUBG Mobile going through the highest settings of Ultra HD, HD, which was great to see that. Uh, also Call of Duty, of course, which runs quite well in most games. Genshin Impact, I wanna say big thanks to you guys for suggesting this game. It looks really fun and interesting and it played really well on the device. Now, um, Blade of God played really well, but I did have some slowdowns on Samurai Jack and it looked like it happened a few stages throughout the game. Uh, nothing too crazy, but it was noticeable enough. Uh, I will at least put this in the corner of game still needs to be optimized for the new chipset, so we have to wait and see, but stay tuned for my full gaming review where I'll give you the thoughts on, on that. Now, when it comes to benchmarks, you guys are probably waiting for that. Uh, I don't have any FPS readings for you. Again, that will be coming on my full gaming review uh, because my benchmark tool just wasn't ready enough for the iPhone 12 and 12 Pro in terms of just some of the software things, but I did run Geek Benchmark 5. And looking at Geek Benchmark 5 for both the iPhone 12 and the iPhone 12 Pro, we had some interesting numbers. So the, for the iPhone 12, single core was 1,594, 12 Pro was 1,606, while the multi-core was 4,120 for the iPhone 12, and 12 Pro had a multi-core of 4,110. So multi-core is a little bit different with the 12 and 12 Pro but that was really, really good. Now, when you compare this to uh, the Galaxy Note 20 Ultra, which has, you know, the Snapdragon 865 Plus behemoth of a processor, that has a single core of 928 and a multi-core of 2,800. So the multi-core processing on the iPhone is double that of the Galaxy. So just in terms of pure raw performance, that is what you will be getting. There's no two ways about it, guys. I'm sorry, that is what it is. So when it comes to temperatures, the iPhone 12 and 12 Pro ran at 107 degrees or 41 degrees Celsius. So it ran rather warm. And this is something we've seen for the iPhone year in, year out, and hasn't changed this year. But what I tend to do is I game with K. Now, the cool thing about the MagSafe charger is that you can use it while you're gaming at the same time, and it doesn't inf interfere with your lightning port. So if you're using lightning headphones, that can go with it as well, but also charges at the back of your device.